what is good we're back and we got some cells for you that you might be nervous about the nfl draft austin what's good man good to have you good to have you in your tiny box over there <laughs> what's up man how you doing good good feel like you're trapped in a glass case of emotion <laughs> a little bit man uh <laughs> Doing a little little different type of episode today. We're talking sales, Casey. So yeah. usually, you know, it's all good. It's all happy. We're always yapping about players we like. But today is going to be a little negative, man. We're going to we're gonna hit you guys with the reality check. So it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, but definitely skewed a little differently. Not just like a list of sales per se, but we want to tie into maybe, since we're getting close to the draft time, and, you know, there's only so much fodder you can have in between, uh, we're going to kind of take... The first and second round of the NFL draft and, and some other rounds and and kind of look at it from the lens of, of kind of how the G maybe the GM's thinking and then whether or not we're getting nervous about any particular uh, wide receivers, running backs, tight ends. And maybe if they if, if they if you would consider selling them with kind of where the projections are leading to of who they might be drafting. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So right off the rip, um, do you have anybody that, that kind of stands out of, of the top, you know, upper echelon, more elite guys that you would that you're slightly concerned or nervous about, Austin? Oh, like in terms of early on in the NFL draft, the team with high draft capital we're talking. Is, is that correct, Casey? Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Either in the draft capital realm or in the, mm -hmm. you know, ADP or high, you know, like would DJ Moore or Pittman, you know, th those guys seem yeah. to be some of the guys at the top that, that, you know, the team is a little needy, but could be bringing an extra target competition. So it's funny you, you say that because, you know, I was looking top 10 and the first team that actually did come to mind was the Chicago bears, right? They're picking ninth overall. It's difficult, man, because they're sitting there now they have, Keenan Allen, right? Mm -hmm. They also have DJ Moore, of course, just had an incredible season last year. Now, Caleb Williams, everybody in the world is anticipating will be in town. Um, but they have a second first uh, second first round pick, right? That being the ninth overall pick. And right now, we think that there's a real chance they could bring in a Roma Dunze if he's still there. So, uh, yeah, let's talk DJ Moore. Let's talk a little Keenan Allen for a minute. I know mm -hmm. Keenan's older. Um It'll be very interesting. If Rome is still there at nine and they do pull trigger, let me ask you, what do you think the the order will be this season in terms of fantasy production? Rank the three wide receivers, hypothetically, if Rome landed in Chicago. Hmm. Uh, I think it would probably go DJ Keenan, hmm. Roma Dunze. Um, hmm. and, and just because you have two great veteran players there. So I, I, I would kind of view it that way, but I, you know, I could see Keenan having the, the higher volume of, of receptions being a, a safety blanket, knowing that he can go. They already kind of have a little relationship from what I understand, Keenan and, and Caleb and DJ Moore could, could certainly have, you know, maybe the more overall yardage uh, with, with maybe, you know, a few more touchdowns. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was that was the first question that popped up for me as well. Mm -hmm. Was was DJ Moore and and I don't know that he it makes me terribly nervous because Keenan Allen, you know, they're they're paying him a lot for one season, getting Caleb started off on the right track. And for Caleb Williams, I think it would be great to bring in Roma Dunze to have Keenan Allen and to have DJ yep. Moore all in your in your rookie season. I think that's a great way for you to start off. It one, it gives you. Uh, a great veteran and may maybe you even bring Keenan Allen back a little cheaper um, on on another two year, one year uh, deal after this. But he you, you can kind of get rid of him after this year if you want to. DJ Moore has one more year left on his deal going into 25 and then he's a unrestricted free agent uh, in 26. So I don't know that I'm terribly nervous about DJ Moore in this scenario here. H how about you, Austin? Um, at the end of the day, DJ Moore is a really good wide receiver, man. He he was dominating with Kyle Allen back in, you know, Carolina. It didn't matter who was at quarterback for him. He He's always proven to be a very good wide receiver. And he just had, what, north of 1,300 yards this year, I believe, in Chicago. Um, and, and, you know, that was with Justin Fields. No disrespect. I like Justin Fields. But I think DJ Moore's just just proven to everybody that he's the truth, man. He can do it all. It doesn't matter. He can run any route. 
any quarterback. Um, so I'm not too worried about him. Um, Casey, I kind of want to pivot to the the teams just before him, actually. Sure. I, I find them really interesting. So we're talking about the Bears at nine. What about the two picks before them, man? Atlanta at eight. Let, let's start with them, okay? Drake yeah. London, right? First guy that's going to come to mind, of course. Um, I know Kyle Pitts there as well. We're talking about the receiving game. But what if Rome went the pick before, man? What if the Falcons said, you know what? We need even more firepower, which might sound crazy because they got the big three in Kyle Pitts, Bijan, and Drake London. What if they were like, you know what, man? Let's go get a dominant number two wide receiver. I mean, holy cow. They would be – I think every 10-year-old on Madden would pick the <laughs> <laughs> the Falcons – to, you know to play with um yeah but they would be they're already electric on offense they would be even sicker and uh it's just something to think about because i think there's a world that exists where it could happen what what do you think yeah i mean that would uh, it's not something that i've given a ton of thought to per se mm-hmm. but i mean when you look around they they do you know they sign mooney but other other than that i mean who's on the roster that you that you really care about it they've they've attacked the offensive side of the ball over the last few drafts with London and, and uh, Bijan and, and Kyle Pitts. Uh, so, you know, you got a new regime in there. We're going to run a lot more, you know, 11 personnel. We're going to have a lot more three wide receivers out there. We, we got Mooney uh, kind of having a good role to fill. But, you know, I think he can be a solid number two. But if he's your number three, I think may, probably even better. Um, so that would, whew, I, that would, that would certainly make me, <laughs> more nervous than DJ Moore in the Roma yeah. Dunze thing. If oh yeah, for for Drake London. Yep, I dude. Let me tell you what. I don't think Rome is going to surpass DJ Moore as the one there. Like in that first season, I don't think it would happen. I worry that he could pass Drake London mm. right away. And and I like Drake Drake London a lot, man. Like he's a great separator. He's he's he was second in the league this year in contested catches only behind mike evans and to, to no surprise mm-hmm. right jake london is a really really good player but if rome goes there man oh my god there's gonna be some hot takes on twitter that are just gonna make you want to log off and delete <laughs> your account but, yeah uh it's uh it's just something to think about and and casey the final thing i'll say about this crazier things have happened like oh. the Fal- definitely could do this yeah know? no I, I i agree i mean i'd like to see him go maybe a little more heavy defense for if, if i was uh, if i was atlanta but i mean yeah. I'd, I'd certainly i wouldn't be like what a dumb pick from atlanta you know if you guys are gonna go go heavy on the on the o which um you know you got a good got a good defensive coach in in raheem uh morris there and then you know bringing in that that la ram style of offense i think it would be great to kick it off with uh, just another badass wide receiver out there, and I love Rome. So, I, I think it'll be Dallas Turner, right? I think they're going to try and get the first defensive player off the board. I think that'd be logical. Who knows what they actually do, but maybe they sit down and say, look, man, we have a really small window to win with Kirk Cousins. He's, I think he's 36, right? He's mm-hmm. not young. I don't think he's necessarily going to be the starting quarterback for a very long time in Atlanta. You know, it might be, I don't know, a two, three-year window. Yeah. Maybe it's longer. I, I don't know. But I think it's going to be somewhere close to that. Maybe they say, we got to go all in on offense, man. And we're in a weak NFC South division. Very, very winnable. Very winnable. Let's just let's go all out on offense. So I don't know, man. And and uh, let's, uh, I, I want to move on, though. I want to talk about the team even before them at seven was the Tennessee Titans. Do you think, Casey, I know they got Traylon. I know, and he feels like an afterthought at this point. Mm. I know that they have, uh, you know, Calvin Ridley just got the bag. What was it? 92 million. Mm -hmm. And then they also have DeAndre Hopkins one more year on his contract. Do you think there's a world that exists where they consider going, you know, I don't know, Rome or if neighbors somehow fell to seven, do you, I don't think neighbors is going to be there at seven, but let's talk, let's talk about it. Do you, do you think, I don't, a chance. I don't, I don't think, I don't think Tennessee that doesn't, I, you know, it's a new brand. It's a new day for Tennessee, but I think, um, focusing on that offensive line should and will be what they do. I think if, if maybe one of those big ticket, if neighbors is potentially maybe even there for some odd reason, I think they could get, get some value in trading back a few picks to somebody who would want to come up and get neighbors. Um, whether, you know, that was, the Jets or, or even the Colts or, you know, some Jacksonville, you know, they could move back and still get a decent offensive lineman. Um, <laughs> if, 
if the uh, if the the Chargers want to move back and not take Alt or some other offensive lineman, and, and they were happen to be there for for the Tennessee Titans because somebody ch- trades up with the Chargers and takes neighbors, I mean, the Chargers trade back. I I I I think the the Tennessees stay with the big nasties. They need to rebuild that offensive line to to you know much like we were talking about the the Bears giving Caleb the best chance. What's going to give Levis the best? You can address the wide receiver position at another point in the draft or in the following drafts. Um, but you need to see if you can. You have enough pieces there to see if Levis can play, and the offensive line is going to give you a better opportunity. So I'm not terribly nervous about anybody there. Um, but both guys are a little older, yeah. so it could happen. Both receivers are a little older, I should say. What What about Brock Bowers? Do you mm. think there's a chance, a chance that the Tennessee Titans are sitting there at seven and, and do it? Because uh, and and I'll be quick. I think it's going to be Joe Alt. Mm-hmm. I think that's the right pick. I think they're going to pair him with Peter Skronsky, you know, tackle out of Notre Dame, 6'9 or 6'8, 320 plus. Like he's just massive. He, I would argue, is a top three, top four player in this entire 2024 draft. That's how much I like Joe Wall. I think he's, I think he's as good as it gets, man. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, we're, we're having fun here. Do you think there's a chance? They go Brock Bowers. No, I'm I'm sticking with I'm sticking mm-hmm. with the offensive lineman. Now, there's always a chance. You know, I don't shouldn't should never say that there's that there's <laughs> yeah. not a chance. Um, Clip it. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's always a chance. Um, but I think moving down to the to the team that that maybe has been mocked more so to Brock Bowers if if he should fall to 15, the Indianapolis Colts. Um, somebody like Michael Pittman has been. You know, rock solid since he's been started. He hasn't vaulted up into that upper echelon of players for fantasy purposes. Um, but love having him on the team. Love drafted him in that fourth, fifth range. Would would anybody, a wide receiver going there or Brock Bowers going there, be in some more target competition uh, with downs, you know, potentially also emerging? You know, we don't know what Anthony, how, how many guys Anthony, we think Anthony Richardson is going to be a fantasy points producer, but how many you know, how comfortable are we with him producing uh, a lot of high end fantasy skill position players? I'm not 100 percent sure. And I'm not a nascent. I love Anthony Richardson. I think he's he's awesome. I think he played really well in the little bit of time that you that you saw him. But would Pittman be somebody that you would might be a little nervous about and, and sell or is, is does it just do they just need another guy so it doesn't make you too nervous? Uh, Pittman's interesting, man. There, there's a lot to to say here. So. First thing I want to talk about with Michael Pittman is his contract, right? He just signed a three-year deal worth up to $70 million. Chris Ballard, the Colts GM, just paid him. I I wouldn't even call it the bag because I genuinely thought he was going to get more, right? Like, good for him, $70 million. He's set for life. God bless him. He balled out this year. I thought Michael Pittman was really going to get, like, man, like 100 mil. I I thought he was Mm going to sign a mega contract, Um, but I think, Good on Chris Ballard for bringing him back. I, and I say relatively cheap. I, I thought it was a team-friendly deal. Uh, with all of that being said, I think that, you know, Michael Pittman, it, it logically, when you think about this, it does make sense to sell him, right? Because he, he had a career year. I think the Colts are looking at two players on offense, right? It might be Quinion Mitchell if, if we're talking defense. It could absolutely happen. But mm. if we're talking offense right now, two players come to mind. It's Brock Bowers, which you mentioned, Casey. The other player that comes to mind, Brian assuming, Thomas? yes, assuming the big three wide receivers are gone. That's, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think Roma Dunze falls to 15. No. Obviously, I don't think that for a second. Somebody's coming to get him. If, if, yeah, if, yeah. Yes, I, I don't think that for a second. And oh, Casey, you will probably never hear from me again if he fell to the Colts at 15. <laughs> <laughs> probably be in jail or, or I, I don't know, man. I'll have a good, I'll have a good night. That's for sure. I, I back to business. <laughs> <laughs> um brian thomas jr man he's he's the the fourth wide receiver off of you know in my rankings and i think the nfl's rankings as well but yeah we're talking brian we're it's whether it's brian thomas jr or brock bowers it's got to be one of those two players for offense Mm -hmm. yes they're both going to affect michael pittman michael pittman had 156 targets last year like that was phenomenal what did he have 1150 total receiving yards i mean he just he again he had a career year so Yes, Casey, I understand wanting to sell Michael Pittman. But but then again, there's the argument that he just signed a three-year deal, a huge deal. He's going to be at one of the focal points of this offense, right, of this Indianapolis Colts right. offense. And, and the final thing that I do want to mention about Pittman, 
you know, he's he again, he's locked up for three years. So is Anthony Richardson. I think Richardson, without question, you know, knows that Pittman will be the one. It, it's just, you know, that Brian Thomas Jr. or uh, Brock Bowers would be the two hypothetically if they land there. I think this would be more of an impact on like Josh Downs, man. I worry. And Josh Downs had a good rookie year. He mm. tailed off towards the end. He is someone who I believe, you know, he's got that dog in him. I think he wants it more than the other players. I really think his work ethic is unmatched, but I, I do worry about him if the Colts were to spend, a, you know, a 15th overall pick on like Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, that's that that would really worry me a lot. That, for, that for would that team. would that would probably be my sentiment a little bit too. I mean, Pittman 109 receptions last year, which was mm-hmm. you know absolutely ridiculous. 156 targets, only four touchdowns. So we could lose some receptions and gain some touchdowns and 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 probably mitigate you know a little bit of that. And I, I think I think we could have even more yards um, from from Pittman. You know, we were getting the the Gardner Minshew uh, chuck it around. Uh, you know, I think Anthony Richardson can help create more big plays, broken kind of plays a little bit. Uh, ha- has a howitzer for an arm as well. Um, so I think I don't I don't think I worry terribly about Michael Pittman. If you wanted to sell because of you know career year and and um, potentially some more target competition, I I, I guess I couldn't blame you. I don't think the stock's really going down uh, per se regardless of what they do. So I think Pittman's pretty safe, but you know, as I did this exercise, there was less and less guys that I was terribly concerned about. Um, so I just wanted to go through some of these top guys and kind of just have the conversation if, and, and see what anything kind of interesting pops up. Uh, let's go two picks further than the Colts. 17. Okay. What about Christian Kirk, right? Obviously Calvin Ridley is now out of town that $92 million deal that he just signed mm-hmm. for, with the Titans. Uh, at this point, feels like wheels up for Christian Kirk, right? Oh, like yeah. right, right this very second. Like yes, I am anticipating the Jags adding maybe one or two potentially wide receivers in this draft. I, I don't think that's a question. I'm just saying right, right now, this very moment, Christian Kirk. You know, he's, you can make an argument that he's a sell high. You know, yeah. So I would, what I would push back with that one is, and he he didn't make my potential list here of of worried about because you know you do lose calvin ridley you bring in gabe gabe davis i think that's a net positive for zay, yeah zay uh, or zay um i think it's a net positive christian, for christian kirk. christian kirk the problem with christian kirk is is that he's he's a, a you know a ninth or tenth round pick right now and and in our startups um so there's you'd be, i'm not selling christian kirk for a two I'd rather have, unless, you know, unless my, you know, always depends on where you're at and you're rebuilding. And then of course, I think if you wanted to sell them for a two and, and, but you're not getting a first for Christian Kirk, at least it doesn't seem like you could. Yeah. I, I just acquired Christian Kirk and in, in a trade um, on a, on a team that I'm competing on and needed, needed a, you know, a third wide receiver or a second flex. I think he's perfect uh, for those kind of roles. I'm trying to find his ADP. Yeah. Nine, yeah. nine, one right now wide receiver 41 so you know probably not quite enough value for me to be um worried about and then if you add another wide receiver i think zay zay jones is probably more the odd man out than than christian kirk um and we saw christian have a bad week one and then his involvement oh, was yeah. absolutely uh paramount to jacksonville um moving forward and then you know no relation but christian kirk goes out the jaguars get on a bad losing streak um, you know, I think, uh, T law being a little banged up through, you know, whether it was a knee or uh, multiple different injuries throughout the season, I think affected some of that as well. But, um, I, I'm in the, I do not think at that 17 pick that the Jaguars are going to take a wide receiver. I think if they do take one, it'll, it would be a little later in the draft for me, but even if they took Brian, uh, Thomas there, I think what, how Kirk operates and what he does for that team, I think is, it's pretty safe. Um, you know, I take back what I said, cause now that I think about it, man, you brought up a good point. And Casey, at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is how does the market view it? You know, what's right. the value, right? And, and 100%. while it does make sense to sell Christian Kirk, logically, the market thinks otherwise, right? Because you're not going to get a first. So, you know, when you really do break it down, now that we're running through this exercise, I agree with you. I think yeah. Christian Kirk 
is probably a hold if anything yeah right? if i could if you could so. get good value for him i could make that argument but i just his, what he's worth to your actual team uh, if you're a competitor if you're not then you should package christian kirk up and try to get a deal done um but if not uh, if you're a competitor you're just not gonna it's not worth what he's worth to my team and what he's worth to the rest of your league and value doesn't it, the market value mm -hmm. isn't right i think it's the best way to Excuse me. Put that. How about Dallas? Let's let's there go right to let's go right to Dallas because that you know people love the Cowboys. C.D. Lamb just seemed to really plant his flag as as you know people were wavering, questioning, was he ever going to be that top three, top five guy that that we've all been holding to the standard of potentially being, and, and we saw it this year. But let's say they do draft Xavier Worthy or. Um, you know, whoever uh, Brian Thomas makes it to them or whoever they, they can draft. And let's say they actually, they hit and they're, they're a good receiver, um, which, you know, isn't, there's going to be some busts. If there's six receivers going in this first round, then, you know, at least a few of them probably aren't going to be as good as advertised or be actually terrible. Um, would that make, would that make a sell high for you for CD lamb in any way, shape or form? Look, I, I know CD just finished as the wide receiver one in fantasy. Uh, there's nothing that will scare me about CD Lamb other than like a significant injury that happens this, it, it, you know, God forbid, knock on wood, if one were to happen this year. Like there, I have zero concerns. I don't think there's anything that could possibly happen that would worry me because, man, when you look at CD Lamb, He's everything you want in wide receiver and more. He's played in 16 football games or more every single season, all four years of his career. What has he missed? One one game or I don't even know if he's missed one game in his career. What whatever it is, he's been as healthy as can be uh a hundred plus a hundred and ten plus targets every single season. I mean, this past year, 181 targets, 135 receptions, uh 1749 yards. I mean, he might be the dynasty wide receiver one over Justin Jefferson, right? Mm. I think people are are you know, it's a conversation, right? Yeah. He's right there. Uh, but but no, man, I, I think that uh, I think if Dallas would be wise to add another wide receiver. Right. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, ever since they lost Amari Cooper, I know their offense was humming for a while this season, but it looked like they, they really needed that, that solid wide receiver two in that offense. Again, it, I feel yeah. like that's the one thing that they're missing. So I, I would I think worthy would be awesome there. Yeah, I would. I'd like to see him. He stays in the state of Texas. That seems like a Jerry move. Mm -hmm. You know, if if I guess potentially if I could pivot off CD to, to one of those upper echelon guys, maybe maybe I would potentially. But um, I, I, again, I, I think I'm mostly with you there. I think he's safely in the top three of, of wide receivers. You'd have to you'd have to say maybe he takes a slight hit if if Worthy goes in there, maybe just a little bit of volume. But um, CD has has always had a place in my heart and has stamped it seems pretty insulated i'm not i wouldn't be terribly terribly concerned so so far not not a whole lot of concern which is um kind of what i came away with here but still wanted to pose the question of some cells how about i know th this one's a little tougher to talk about because the receiver is in uh, a little bit of legal trouble right now uh but you know i, I will let the situation play out and let's let's just say Four game suspension for Rashi Rice. Um, Kansas City obviously signs Marquise Brown, but I mean, I, I I don't think there's a way that they go into this season without drafting another wide receiver. Now, whether that's 31 or back out of the second or w w whenever they do it, it seems like they could and should and will be bringing in another wide receiver, which I had talked about this, you know, a while ago, but does that make rashi rice's sell even though you probably don't want to sell him right at the moment because people certain people are are would be more nervous about the acquisition man i think rashi rice is a buy if if casey if you could promise me you said four games right this is all hypothetical if you could confirm that if i knew that for a fact I would be buying Rashi Rice instantly, right? Mm. Uh, because we're talking dynasty, man. What is four games? Right. It's it's nothing, right? If it was a season, okay, totally different story, right? But um, I don't know what it's going to be, man. That That's a very difficult question to ask uh, or to answer, rather. Um, could be six games, could be more, could, yeah. could be two, could be four. I, I don't know. Right. I think there's a wide range of outcomes. It's his first offense, which is probably you know 
it's it's good for his case, I guess, because he hasn't been in trouble prior to this, at least not to my knowledge. Um, but it, yeah, in the event that it was four games, I would absolutely be buying Rashi Rice right now. Yeah, no, I'm 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 mostly with you when I when these things arise, it, it usually turns into a buy for me. Um, I, I said, said previously in season later at the end of the season, kind of maybe seeing this kind of coming, not the, that he got in trouble, but that they would probably be bringing in a receiver and drafting a high receiver, um, that maybe I would sell if I had 10 out of 12 leagues, I might sell four leagues of Rashi rice if I could just to diversify a little bit. And I probably still feel about the same. Uh, yep. With that, I would still keep a decent amount. I'd, I'd keep over 50%, uh, but I would I would probably sell some. Right now, it makes the market not as as hard as you'd like it to be. Uh, but I, if that's the case, if there's if there's any if there's any dip, I'll I'll buy uh, because um, you know I I don't. Hopefully, this isn't a pattern, and it's not. You know, it's not. It didn't seem to be really too many flags on Rashi Rice with the personality. Stup- hopefully, this yeah. was just a stupid mistake, and hopefully, you know, luckily nobody was, you know, killed. Some people were hurt and injured. So, I'll leave that for everybody else to decide. That the the lawyers and the NFL, and you know, I, I would say four to six games is probably what we'll see. But again, we shall wait and see. So, uh, can that- I? Go ahead. Throw out a few numbers about Rashi real sure, quick, sure, just to uh, make my case even stronger for buying. Uh, if so, we're going to include regular season and postseason here, right? So he's going to have a little advantage, of course, because he played more games. But Rashi Rice ranked first in the NFL last year in, in yak, right? Eight hundred fifty-three yards. Uh, I can't believe he was first in the NFL. I understand he played more games, but I still can't believe that he was first in the entire NFL in yak. That that really caught me off guard. Uh, another thing that he was in, that he was first in. Sorry, I'm pulling up this tweet. Right, I, I posted this the other day, man. I was just really digging into Rashi Rice, and I just wanted to see just how good he was throughout his rookie campaign. He was first in the NFL with with Patrick Mahomes in, in terms of uh, percentage of targets caught, 80.2 percent. Right, the next closest was Adam Thielen at 75 percent. Uh, so they had chemistry right away. Right, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, you know, leaned on him. Uh, he was ninth in receptions, ninth in receiving touchdowns, fifteenth in receiving yards, uh, just just two point eight percent drop rate, like very very good hands. Second in target accuracy, third in target separation. He separated really well. Uh, seventh in fantasy points per route run. I just and, and and final thing I'll say about Rashi Rice, man, he did all of this. And he did not play 70% of snaps mm. until week 14. Mm-hmm. Remember oh, yeah. how Andy oh, Reid oh, took sure. forever. He took an eternity. And he's... like, shout out to Andy Reid because he's a all-time great head coach. But man, what were you doing with Rashi Rice? Like you drafted this kid, you clearly liked him. Why didn't you utilize him yeah, a lot I until think that's very an Andy, late? I think that's an Andy Reid. He slow plays the rookies a little bit. Um, so Should, he shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we were screaming it for a while to buy because it's, you know a lot of the numbers were pointing that direction. Um, so, so I like it, man. I like it. You know, like I said, in this first or second round, I think there's a lot more wide receiver needy teams than, than guys that would make me nervous. There's, you know, you have the bills where you have mm-hmm. Shakir and, and Curtis. So I don't, you know, I don't really know that there's a, a sell there. Like, I don't think anybody's really given you anything. If you could get a two for either one of those guys, I guess that would be fine. And I'd be, I'm, I, I'm a fence rider in there. And if, if you wanted to, you know, buy if you could buy Shakir for a third, I'd be interested. You know, I did make an offer yesterday. I offered Jaden Reed in a second to get Rashi Rice. Got got declined. Mm. But yeah, uh, you should. But but yeah, <laughs> but you should I, be sending those shot. offers. So I like it. You got to yeah. you got to heat check sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm with you, man. I don't think there's any Bills wide receiver that's going to net you. Of course. You know, not a first. I don't think I don't think any wide receiver you'll you'll get even a second. I, right. You know, we're talking right. third third at best right. so uh it's it is what it is at that point you should probably just hold the bills you know wide right. receiver two anticipating they're going to draft one of these guys and, and casey do you think do you think they're going to trade up do you think that the bills are going to get aggressive in this draft and get and get a wide receiver a little bit earlier i, I don't i don't think so i think they'll, they'll probably stick and pick i think there's enough wide receivers there I, they do have a decent amount of picks yep. but i think most of them are a little later in the draft so i don't know that they'd want to forego much more capital they they lost a lot of pieces on defense some holes to fill um so i I would i would say they probably excuse me stick and pick what are your thoughts here on on buffalo i'm pulling up their picks right now they have a 28th overall pick then they don't pick again till 60 
Yeah. 128, 133, right. 144, big, 200, big gaps. So I don't, I don't think they have enough, yeah. you know, unless they want to get next year stuff involved. I don't think they have enough yeah. um, collateral to get up to really, really go crazy. So I think they stick and pick and th- there's, like I said, yeah. enough, enough receivers there for them to get somebody if they want, or even, you know, potentially even wait if they're feeling frisky. I guess, yeah, they could move 28, 60, and then like maybe next year's two or three to move up earlier in this first round. But I don't, I don't know if that's the route they're going to take. I'm yeah. just spitballing here, but uh, yeah, let's uh, who, what other teams crossed your mind? Not too many for the wide receivers, um, but we can, we can hop over to the running back side real quick and then we can get out of here. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, with the running backs, we know we have four ish guys that could be day two picks ish with Benson Brooks, potentially right maybe lloyd and quorum uh, i would say those are probably around your five maybe braylon allen makes it in there uh for some teams maybe there's a wild card in there that somebody really likes and 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 sticks with an estime or something or 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 a bucky Irvin or some, something somebody gets crazy uh with with will shipley or something uh but for the most part those those are the guys so you know we know that Dallas has been a hot topic in the second round and, and, and LA chargers have been a hot topic in the second round, but you know, the, those got because they don't have a running back, but we're more talking about things that can make you nervous. So somebody like a Buffalo, somebody who's always kind of flirting with adding another guy, somebody like the bucks who have 57, 89, 92 and 125. And they've kind of openly said that they want to add another run. There is another running back worth talking about on their roster outside of Rashad White right now. You know, you have the Rams who have a lot of pick. Now, Kyron was great last year. I don't think they should personally do anything, but they they could spend some later capital and add somebody in there who could, you know, potentially give Kyron a breather. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we have teams like the Commanders. They have 36, 40, 67, 78, and 100. So Brian Robinson's kind of somebody who's riding the fence there for me of, of could be really interesting going into this season with kind of a new regime. Or they could bring, you know, another guy. Austin Eckler's a little old. Uh, Brian Robinson wasn't drafted by this regime. Some interesting play, you know, Pats with Ramondre Stevenson. They got some picks, 34, 68. Cincy has 49, 80, 97. They got Zach Moss and, and Chase Brown got rid of Mixon. Uh, Broncos don't have a ton of picks, but they seem like maybe they could try to stamp another wide receiver in there. They got a lot of ifs and maybes and Javante, who again, not Sean Payton's guy. So maybe he finds one, but they don't have a ton of, of picks there. Um, and then Arizona was another one, obviously not a huge player in James Conner as far as your fantasy value wise, but he's somebody you could really rely on for a winning team as far as running back production. He was really giving it to you, really helping you out uh, at, at, at big stretches last of last season, just got hurt. Any any of those places or, or topics that you want to tackle here first? Uh, let's talk about Dallas at 56, man. That's got to be one of the most you know enticing picks. I, I, I really think they have to go running back there. Um, I... God, their fan base is not going to be happy. I don't think they're going to be happy. I think they're going to be like, we have bigger holes here. We, you know, we have to, you know, work on our defense. Whatever Dallas is going to yap about, whatever their fan base is going to yap about, I, I don't know. I feel like they're just going to be pissed off at Jerry because they're always pissed <laughs> off at Jerry. Yeah. But uh, 56, right? Their second round pick, the Dallas Cowboys. I think it's going to be one of the top two running backs. I think that's right around the range, you know, because this is towards the end of the second. Um which is where I'm anticipating the running backs going. I don't think we're going to see Trey Benson go like 35. I don't think we're going to see Jonathan Brooks go 35, 40 range. I think it's going to be more of like 50 to 64 range, right? We're talking, you know, the end of the second. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's that's kind of how my I, I have these players graded. And I think that's how the market also views both of these, you know, top running backs. They're, they're the top two running backs in my rankings. And I think Dallas is going to land one of them with that pick. And when they do, 
oh my God, you better believe people are going to overreact in their dynasty rookie draft. You better believe they're going to be first round picks in those drafts. I promise you they're going to be like that 110, 111, 112 range. They're going to sneak in, man. They're going to get over the wide receiver six or seven in this class. They're going to get in. And uh, let's talk about, you know, the depth right now that they have, the Cowboys. Right. Rico Dowdle, right? Is right. he, yeah, look, man, the markets, you're not going to get anything from Rico Dowdle. It yeah. would be a miracle no, if right. he survived this draft. It's not going to happen. Right. Um, I, at this point, I, I guess I would just say hold Rico Dowdle, and God forbid, like <laughs> one of the top running backs got hurt, like Rico Dowdle would be the guy, right? Yeah. I, I, I think that's probably the, the best way to approach it. What, what about you, Casey? Yeah, I mean, the, the, they're not really somebody like they, they should take a running back. They very well could take a running back. Rico's kind of like we talked with the Bills. You know, you're not not really going to get a whole lot for him. You could maybe package him up pre-draft and see what happens. And and post-draft, you know, guys like Rico or Zamir White, um, if they if they survive or only get a later round back that that, that they add in there, then those guys could be big winners. Um, But, uh, you know, the sell potential for right now isn't super high for a lot of those guys. I think a lot of people are anticipating that to kind of happen. So, you know, I, I, I think you just you hold on tight. Or if you can send them in a package, because I don't think any of those guys are fetching anything by themselves. It might be somebody that say, ah, you know, it's an interesting kicker. If they don't do anything, maybe I get a good bump in value here. But for the most part, probably uh, kind of holding those style of guys. Um, for for me, I would I would look at probably Cook and and White being the guys I'd be kind of nervous about in sells. And I think that's easy for me to say. Because I'm 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 kind of on the fence with both of those guys um, cool. in general. Um, James Cook, we're, we're we're a little nervous about James Cook. Let's talk about that for a minute. I, so I don't I don't know that I'm necessarily nervous because, like we stated, the the Bills don't have a whole lot of high picks, but they're always mm-hmm. somebody who's poking around at running backs that and seeming to want to add somebody else there. Um, so if they went in the fifth round and uh, you know added somebody like an Estime, who's kind of the opposite of what. Uh, Cook does, you know, I don't, I, and I think a, a good player, um, I think, you know, I, in, but again, like I said, in general, I'm, I'm always leaning a little bit more towards the sell side of those guys, mostly because of the way that the, the bills have showed me how they're going to use and deploy their running backs. And they, like I said, they're always poking around at another guy to add to that roster. So, you know, cook is still somebody who you can get, I think decent value for to the right owner in your league. Oh yeah. 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 Um, so he would be potential running back, uh, <laughs> sell for me. And I, you know, I don't know if that even really has anything to do with the draft, but I can, I can see the bills later in the draft, adding another running back that could potentially steal touchdowns, uh, from, uh, cook, which are already kind of hard to come by because Josh Allen steals them, you know, decent yeah. amount. and you add somebody like estimate bigger back, can grind some stuff out um and, and yeah, you know yeah. is is actually pretty elusive uh in the in the stack box area um gives you something different than than cook has so that, that would make me a little nervous and, and a sell right now we're, we're seeing james cook in the seventh ish round of our adp uh seven one to be precise um i would i'd feel if i could if i could upgrade james cook to you know, a Jaden Reed who's a pick above him in our ADP or George Pickens who's a few picks below him, I would do that all day long. If I could upgrade to Josh Jacobs somehow or Saquon Barkley, if I want to stay in the running back market, I would do I would do that as well. I don't know that you can quite get away with that, um, but yeah. what are your thoughts? <laughs> Man, I, I love the NFL draft so much, but at the same time, this is the worst part of it because, it, you know, there's landmines everywhere. Sure. Like if SMA goes there... Yes, I know James Cook is is still the guy, but you know we're talking five eleven, two twenty one, like a big back, right? He's he he's like you mentioned, elusive, great in uh, forced missed tackles, crushed, uh, just production was phenomenal. Twenty twenty three, absurd amount of just 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 uh, you know all across the board, estimate was really good, and and like you know as I'm looking at the Bills picks, you know we got one twenty eight, one thirty three, you know fourth round picks. They got, you know, multiple fifth round picks like that's right around the, his territory, I believe. And, uh, you know, you look at the Bills running back depth chart right now. It's Ty Johnson, Darrington he- Evans after, you know, after right. uh, James Cook. It's it's nothing. It's you and me, Casey. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we might be able to make the roster. Yeah. Uh, I got to call up Buffalo after this podcast. But um, yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, man, I, I think that you made a good point. I really think, and if it's not Esteve, man, like it could be, it could be any of could these. Could be guys, Vidal. Right? Could be you know. Yeah. Could, could be any of those like later round, later round guys. I don't think they would. Bucky Irving, any anyone, man. Right, right. So the guys yeah. who who I think are still pretty good, but got bumped down throughout the process. Uh, you know, any of those guys kind of go through there. I I would be interested. And then you know the Bucks are somebody who, like I stated, have a lot of picks in, in that mid mid round range: fifty seven, eighty nine, ninety two, one twenty five. They've they, they need somebody else like you know, very similar to the depth chart of what you know the uh, Bills have there. Rashad White would would could potentially be a, a great receiving back. Um, not again, not throwing any shade at at at, at Rashad White at all. Mm-hmm. But if they added somebody and you know to go along with him in that third fourth round, um, you know I think I think you got it. The volume was great with with white and the receiving chops are awesome so you put those two, two things together you know could could hurt his opportunities a little bit so he he's kind of floats in that same uh range as cook as far as adp he's right there at 610 and cook was uh 71 so all those same guys apply for me to trade out for and then if i could get if i could trade into that mid mid to late first that 1819 110 area with any of those guys, I certainly would. Yeah, I uh, I worry Rashad White. It was you know reminds me a little bit of the Ramondre Stevenson situation a year prior. Everything broke right for Ramondre that year. He had you know a top tier fantasy season, top tier NFL season, and the same thing just happened. I understand it's not apples to apple. I understand it's not identical situation, but I'm just saying everything fell into place for Rashad this season. And he crushed. Right. Like we see that he has real upside. I, I do worry. Like I, I'm with you. I, I think he's more of a sell. And again, man, this is another player. The market's just not there. Similar to Christian Kirk, right? Like you look at the production, you're not going to get what you want. So um, right. uh, it's it's tough, right? He's he's someone that while I'm watching Roger Goodell walk up to the podium for every pick, I'm sweating. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm 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 nervous holding Rashad White. Yeah. I I don't doubt that he's a good player. I just I just I know how the NFL draft works. I know I know what reality is and you know yeah. he's, he's someone I'm I'm going to be stressed about. Yeah, and then I brought up Brian uh Brian Robinson the the Commanders have 9 picks, one first, two seconds, three thirds. Um so that that, that could potentially be something they have a lot of problems to sort out mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. kind of a, a a tweener but if I could if I can move on from him, I would. And then the Rams have 11 picks, right? So not a ton on the high end side of things, but they got the first, the second. Uh, then they have two thirds, two fifths and four six, which is they've they've made a living on those later round picks uh, and been great with them. And Kyron was one of those fifth round picks from a few years ago and absolutely set the league on fire this year. Now, I don't think that they would be replacing him. I'm not terribly worried about his volume getting terribly disrupted, but they certainly do need to try to maybe find, you know, another guy who, if Kyron misses time, you saw it very much affected the Rams. If you watch them week to week when Kyron wasn't in there and you, you also saw that the person who was spelling them were just, were just okay, but they're not anything special. So do they, they stick with Zach Evans in year two and maybe find something there? Or do they, do they, you know, refire again and grab, you know, somebody in that in the fifth or sixth round and take another shot at a running back here. And is that, would that worry you about Kyron at all? Or what are your thoughts here? We'll, we'll wrap up with this. I think that they're going to add, the question is what round do they do it? You know, do they prioritize a running back? But it makes me a little nervous knowing that, uh, you know, a fifth round pick, you know, not only does he surpass Cam Akers, but he's the bell cow, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying the same exact thing is going to happen to him. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I firmly believe that Kyron Williams has proven to be a really, really good football player. Uh, he crushed this year. He literally was on IR and, and like it just, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, like when you look at his, his numbers at the end of the year, you're like, how is this dude so good? He only played what 12 football games. It, he, he was, Kyron was, awesome lights out um on a per game basis was awesome i mean he was on pace for what 1900 yards this year just just crazy numbers so uh, i'm a firm believer kyron williams is a really good football player uh he's another guy though that if things i think things broke right for him this year as well i don't doubt that you know he has great work ethic and you know great skill but 
he's he's someone that again i'm going to be watching the nfl draft and i'm going to be sweating if, if i own him i'm, I'm going to be thinking about it and and i don't even know casey the final thing i'll say about kyron williams the market man i don't yeah. think the market is quite there for him either i think Ooh. people are smart enough to uh, I, 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 think, I would disagree you know, there i would i would I, say there's a decent market there if you if you wanted to get out you probably could now would it be for another running back i'm not sure because it seems like you know, some of those other, you know, you'd have ATN, HN are kind of the guys floating around his territory. Yeah. Maybe JT, if you could catch somebody who's sleeping and hating, um, yeah. would you, would you trade him in for any of those guys? Oh, oh, absolutely, man. I, I, I in a heartbeat. All um, of them? I, ETN, I would prefer, uh, JT, I'd prefer. And who else did you mention? HN? HN? Uh, I think actually I have, let me, I'm pulling up my rankings right now. I, I, I have a uh, ETN at, at running back six. JT running back five, Kyron is running back eight, and then HN is running back 10. So just to show you where I'm at. Uh, but you know what, man? My leagues are probably different than yours because the market isn't there in in like mm-hmm. the three main leagues that I'm in, uh, my three main, you know, my three biggest leagues. Uh, th- for some reason, he's just not valued there. Um, I, I, I think that they – Man, I play with a bunch of like analytical nut jobs and like, you know, they probably just see his draft cap and they're mm. like, oh, fifth round pick can never be good, you know. So yeah. uh, I, I just, I don't know, the market's not there in my league. Uh, but but then again, you're going to be able to get more for Kyron than you are obviously for somebody like Rashad White, right? Where, you know, mm. he's not quite that tier, of course. But um, right. I, I'm in on Kyron. I'm just saying I, I, I know that I couldn't get what I want for Kyron in my leagues. Everybody's league is different. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You know, as far as our ADP shows, we got RB8 fifth round for Kyron. So that's at least some seems like some respect throughout. You know, we've, we've probably done 20 or 30 drafts, it seems like, uh, mm-hmm. for at least in the, in the last few months. Um, probably not quite that many. I don't have the sample size in front of me, but a lot. And I, I, I feel pretty good about Kyron for at least another year. Um, but you're you're the I. Rams have been great in those later rounds, and and maybe they do prioritize it. Too um, good, but yeah, been too too good. good, too good. All right, let's wrap this up. We got a uh, 2023 redraft of that class uh, about to lay down. So make sure you like, subscribe, uh, comment below of anything that you liked, you didn't like. Who 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 are you selling? Who are you getting rid of? Who's making you nervous? Um, so it was a fun exercise to go through, a little, little bit different episode. But like I said, we're, we're getting close to the NFL draft, so I don't want to be giving you too much, uh, you know, do this, don't do that, when when we're going to get a whole new landscape change and some more pieces of the puzzle. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be giving out advice just to just to give you ad, advice, uh, just, to, just to talk into these microphones. But um, I think having conversations right now is the best thing that you can do, uh, feeling out things, seeing what other people think. Uh, I've been making some trades. I got, we, you know, we've been doing some Patreon stuff about trades. Me and Big Co have been firing some trades. We, ma- we made some regular content about some trades we've been making. So uh, it's, just, it's definitely still a good time to make trades. But like as far as like a bunch of buy lows and a bunch of sell, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough time for, for that kind of stuff. And, and the rookie stuff, how much how much more fodder can we do on the rookies? You know, it's, we need we need another piece to get re- revitalized about them. Right. I'm ready for redraft case. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, man. Well, Austin, you're the man. Excited to do this next show. Make sure you like, subscribe. You can catch us on Patreon, $5 holler. We got a Discord. We got, we'll be doing plenty of drafts. After the draft is over, we're going to be hammering best balls um, out the wazoo, $5, $20 ones over on Patreon. We'll do some for the public as well. We're going live. Uh, we'll do one more live mock before the draft, and then we'll be going live. Um, of course, after that, during that, all around that, we'll be, we'll be hanging out with the Discord members during the draft and then we'll be putting out um plenty of content to follow so keep it locked and loaded over here you'll see austin you'll see me you'll see big d might even catch some jay wayne and some big co so uh, appreciate you guys and we'll catch you next time peace